Hey, what's going on guys? Arava here and welcome back to another video on Forza Motorsport 7 and once again we're back with the Formula E cars for a bit of a different video. Now this is actually inspired by some of your guys' comments of the previous Formula E video we did at Long Beach. In, the, in that video I basically asked you guys what I should be doing next and some of you guys suggested a few F1 circuits that I should take the Formula E cars to and that got me thinking that might make a kind of uh, fun little mini series perhaps that we can do which is basically Formula E versus F1 tracks and the first one we're going to do is the Japanese Grand Prix, considering that we've got the Japanese Grand Prix coming up in real life for the F1 2017 season. So here we are at Suzuka, and we're going to be driving in the apt Audi today. We're going to be doing five laps only, uh, because obviously this circuit, the F1 circuit, is a lot larger than the Formula E cars are used to. Uh, Long Beach was, I think, 1.9-ish sort of miles. Uh, Japan Suzuka is, I think, 3.5 at least, so it's uh, just about double the distance there. So the cars are going to take a lot longer to go around the circuit than the Formula 1 one cars are so five laps is I think sufficient to get enough racing in and to hopefully get up to P1 if we can we're up to P8 you can see as a little bit of an odd start for some of the AI cars not gonna lie uh, into uh, the first sec uh, into the first sector they all went very very slow for some reason but it's all fine for now we've also bumped up the difficulty from the Long Beach video we did I believe it's on expert right now as usual from that Long Beach video uh, driving with the Xbox one controller uh, no assists no traction control or ABS activated and uh, as I was mentioning that Long Beach video actually surprisingly pretty stable um, uh, on the controller. I was actually very surprised that it felt that good on the controller. I thought I would have needed to maybe have, break, have broken out the wheel, but not the case. So you can see we're already up one more position, up into P7, just about went down on the left-hand side and now skating through into the Degna's uh, curves on the right-hand side, getting a little bit wrong in the second Degna, nearly going off into the gravel, but we just about hold it. But uh, having to get used to the car straight away, I mean, you know, in itself, it's an odd kind of feeling to be in a Formula E car around the Japanese Grand Prix. But going from the Long Beach video I did in the Jaguar, that had five gears. Now, the apt Audi, this is obviously last year's apt Audi car. Obviously, Audi for this upcoming Formula E season have their own works car. But the apt Audi from last season has uh, three gears in this game. I don't know if that's the case in real life, but because some of you guys were saying that maybe Forza have modelled it a little bit incorrectly on the Jaguar car, perhaps, or maybe some of the other cars. I'm not too sure about that. I can't say for certain. But in the game right now, this apt Audi has three gears to it, which was... Certainly an experience, um, I'll put it that way, uh, to only have three gears available. Of course, uh, in F1, we have uh, we have eight gears. It was seven in the V8 era. Then we got used to having one extra gear and not even using first gear really too much of the time in the 2017 cars and the v V6 cars indeed. But uh, only having three gears was odd, even more odd, going through 130R in a Formula E car. I actually managed to go flat out there, which uh, I was going to say was surprising, but then you kind of look at the top end speed I was going at on the bottom right there. Wasn't too, like, you know, fast obviously the Formula E cars aren't that amazingly fast who knows in the future you know this you know this is quite a spectacle to see them go around the F1 circuits but it got me thinking like you know I don't know you know all this talk about electrical energy being the way to go for the future for road cars and with Formula E obviously so many manufacturers going to the uh, category who knows maybe in the future if they want to bump up the power these electrical cars can pump out maybe we might actually see these cars go to F1 circuits in the future who knows who knows but um yeah, as I was saying, back to my original point of three gears. Very, very odd. Like, to only have two gears, basically, you're working with. I only used first gear through the hairpin, I think it was. So to only have second and third gear, basically my working gears, was uh, very, very strange. I mean, this is probably one of the best circuits to have this car at, because in the S section, obviously, in the F1 cars, you're not really braking too much. You're kind of engine braking, as it were. You kind of let the car roll through. And I guess in this car, it would be motor braking. I mean, it's not an engine, so the power unit motor braking I mean there's not even motor braking because obviously electrical motors don't have that um, in it so it's kind of just letting the car roll through and kind of decreasing the speed naturally just the aerodynamics or whatever the kind of bits the Formula I was I was going to say aerodynamics slow down the car but the Formula E car doesn't really have too much aerodynamics to them but we saw we made a pretty damn nice pass once again down the inside up the hill in uh, sector one uh, it appears the AI a little bit weak through that left hander and now we're closing up to the top five you can see the mini map there they're all very uh, quite closely compacted here so we may have a really good shot at getting up into first place which would be quite a task actually because although into turn one the AI were very um, clumsy let's say and slow 
slow. Now that we got up to speed, the expert AI are pretty damn challenging, actually. And you have to do, you do have to pick your line, obviously. And uh, especially in the Formula E car with the cockpit view, it's uh, a little bit tricky to see where on earth the, the front of the car is. You know, the, the actual element of the front wing is very, very low to the ground that you can't even see it. So uh, definitely a little bit tricky to pick out a side-by-side -side moment. And also sometimes uh, this uh, the AI on Forza can be a little bit erratic and aggressive. Sometimes they don't have the spatial awareness that uh, we may have as a luxury on the Codemasters F1 game. So you have to be a little bit careful. You can see we do close up, though, into the last chicane up to fifth place and get very, very close to the back end of one of these uh, first Jaguar cars. I believe one of the second Jaguar guy is leading the race. So we get very, very close, get brake checked even. And so we have to wait until the main straight. But let's try and get in the slipstream, can we, on the left-hand side and try and gain the speed and maybe make a move into turn one. Let's see. Uh, we're going to max out third gear, our top end gear here. And can we make a pass into turn one? We're going to go for it. We nip down the inside. Doesn't work out, though. Very early on, I can see clearly we're going to get squeezed out there. So I uh, back out of it. We actually get a snap of oversteer as I change that to second gear. And all race long, three laps gone. And I still haven't got turn one uh, absolutely nailed as I would like it, uh, like it to. But uh, in the S section, at least, I think we've got this pretty nailed down in terms of the momentum swing. And so much so that, again, we have to back out of it with the Jaguar car. So there's Jaguar's AI is uh, definitely getting the uh, defensive moves out there and kind of parking the bus on many of these apexes as we swing through once again up this hill where they're losing a bit of time and we're getting all the time indeed in the slipstream of the Jaguar car. We're going to move to the left, uh, to the right hand side this time to go down the inside of Degna 1. Going to be close up there. You can see sliding through and that's a very, very nice panning shot on the replay camera there to go through and uh, we're up into P5 now and you can see clearly P4 and P3 not too far up the road there and we could get them on the same lap here. So let's see as we go into the hairpin. You can see P2 down to P4 very close together and you can see as we swing through on the exit a little bit of tank slapper uh, but we do gain a little bit of time there using first gear as I mentioned through the hairpin gaining the speed. We cut later down that back, back straight on the same lap going towards 130R. We're going to be flat out here and hopefully gaining quite a bit on P4 up ahead. Here we go 130R on board here flat out at the apex and also potentially overtaking this car on the left hand side. Very very close stuff to actually keep it in a straight line even if there's been a bit of contact I think and a little bit on the grass there on the left hand side with the wheel but we just managed to make the pass completed through the chicane that was very very close uh, that will uh, that is probably one part that is difficult on the Xbox One controller with these cars is because it's all about mechanical grip and just the weight shift basically of the car and on the Xbox One controller very very difficult when you're going flat out through 130R there on the exit trying to just have the most precise turn on the joystick to move a little bit left to give him the space on the right hand side for the AI there so that was probably the biggest moment so far in this race of losing the back end nearly and uh, nearly having to wreck the car and perhaps use a rewind feature from the, the Forza in-game uh, gameplay, obviously. And now we close up, though, onto P3 now. So we are going to be on the podium at least, maybe, as we try and feed it around the outside, potentially. Not going to work, I don't think. Actually, no. Hang on. Here we go. We've got the room. It's very, very close. He's squeezing us onto the grass. And a bit of contact's made there in true Formula E fashion. And we have to lift off a little bit to slow the car down and stop it uh, getting away from us there in second gear. But we did find the grip there in second gear. Here and uh, having to change down for Degna 1, trying to now go down the inside. It's going to be very, very close on the apex. Bit more contacts made. We go a little bit off. I think a bit of gravel has hit our left-hand side tyre. And as I mentioned before, in true uh, FE, uh, FE fashion, we've made a little bit of contact and we've made the move there. I mean, I, I've only watched a, uh, like literally a handful of FE races, but every time I have, there definitely has been a bit of argy-bargy. The elbows out there, uh, a little bit of side pod to side pod contact or whatever you want to call it. The mud guard, I guess you could say, on the, on the front tyres there. But so we just about made it uh, after some initial contact up the hill. Did get it eventually through Degna 2 there. A bit of a dive bomb, uh, I'll admit. So now we close up now onto P2 then. Again, as you've probably seen previously in this video, a little bit of snap of oversteer as we go into the brake zone initially. Changing that to second, kind of letting the car nicely roll through. And for the first time, I think I took that exit a little bit better than the previous attempts. But that's exactly what I've been... Uh, getting into turn one then that's not allowing me to take one, a turn one perfectly because as soon as you get on the brakes because the car doesn't have too much aero on it to actually slow down the car naturally anyway it's pretty much all done on the brakes and of course it's not a street circuit we're here at Suzuka 
so you're going pretty rapid down these straights with these FE cars. So the brakes, the braking is so, so tricky and the rear end just wants to really step out very, very quickly, especially if you slam them on, uh, on a little bit and start locking up a tad. So uh, yet to get turn one right, but we've got a bit of clean space ahead of us. I don't think we'll be catching up to what looks like, I think that's the Dragon Racing car, I think. I might be wrong. You can correct me if I am wrong. Uh, I can't quite tell from here, but uh, we've got a bit of clean air. I don't think we're going to actually catch him up into turn one. So let's try and take turn one as best we can and let's see if we can gain a bit of time here for the first time. We're going to let the car roll through a little bit longer in third gear. We definitely do close up quite rapidly on the left-hand side. You can see on the exit though, getting a little bit wide, but we definitely have gained a bit of time there and that was probably the best I've taken turn one so far, I would say, all in all. I mean, it wasn't perfect yet again and that's going to annoy me a little bit then. The, these entire five laps, I haven't taken turn one perfectly as I would like to. Uh, once again though, in this air section though, got that pretty nailed down. We gained quite a bit there on the, uh, I, th I think this is the Dragon Racing team, I want to say. I think. I don't know. I, I really, I'm probably getting it completely wrong there, but uh, I'm not really too familiar. But uh, apart from the major names in the in the sport of like Jaguar and Apt Audi, I guess you could say, and Renault, obviously Renault Edams. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, they're not in in this game uh, at the moment. Oh, well, at least uh, to my knowledge, they're not in this game, which is a little bit unfortunate. I kind of find that weird. They've only got um, I think it's four. I think it's four of the 2016/17. Formula E cars, and then they've got, I think, another five of the previous season, the, the two seasons ago, essentially. So uh, that was a little bit frustrating to see because I was kind of hoping they had the entire field. Uh, that's that's what I was under the illusion of when I first saw Formula E cars were going to be in this game. I thought they would have had the entire season, which would have been kind of cool, but I guess, I don't know, maybe they couldn't afford the licensing or they just decided to, you know, from a marketing perspective, not to have all the cars, or maybe Formula E didn't want that because I believe Formula E are also trying to uh, do a deal with, I think it's Real Racing 3, I think, that does their E races. Um, but anyway, as I've been talking about that, you can actually notice we just did a really awesome sequence side by side through the entirety of Spoon with P2 there so actually unfortunately I was talking about I was uh, too caught up in talking about that that I uh, couldn't commentate on the move there but that was actually a really nice a uh, side by side moment through the entirety of Spoon with that P2 I was surprised that I actually put up that much of a fight there I thought I would have got that and I was fully prepared just to take the racing line into the initial part of Spoon but no to my to my surprise he was there and you can see uh, as I mentioned earlier there is that, sa that, that second Jaguar racing car in P1 you can see we get it pretty damn well under braking you can see how close we are to the back end of his car we're actually going to gain even more down this back straight in third gear. And so frustrating, actually. We literally had half a lap more. Or perhaps if I didn't fight one of the other cars uh, as much as I did previously in the race, we could have done up to P1 and we could have got first place there. So once again, coming second, I think, because I think we came second in Long Beach. So frustrating there. But nonetheless, really, really awesome stuff actually to be in the Formula E car around the Japanese Grand Prix. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this concept of the video. And if you do want to see more of these videos, then do let me know in the comments below. Hit that like button, obviously, if you did enjoy it to support the content. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're not here, then do get subscribed for weekly videos. I've been Ever. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And I'll see See you guys next time. Goodbye.